All right, so people always ask me how I got a Mega Frost Dragon. Uh, I'm gonna try to kind of explain it while I'm in this uh, trading server. Um, you kind of have to focus on one trade at a time. You can't, you can't just think, oh, I want a Mega Frost Dragon and then trade for it immediately. You kind of, I mean, the best advice I could give you is to go online and kind of do some research as to what a Mega Frost Dragon is, is worth, and then go backwards from that. Uh, look online to see what people trade for it, and then when you start seeing like the different pets that people trade for a Mega Frost Dragon, you go from there to see like, okay, so somebody traded a Neon Shadow Dragon and a Neon Frost Dragon for a Mega Frost Dragon, how do I get a Neon Shadow Dragon? And then you look online and you're kind of like, oh, okay, here are all the things that people traded to get a Neon Shadow Dragon. And you keep going down the line and you can kind of get a blueprint of what people trade in order to get certain pets. Um, now, at, at, its, at its core, though, is getting good trades. Um, and you got to focus on each trade. So like, you know, right now I'm trading a Mega Frost Dragon and I'm expecting to get, you know, I want to get a good trade. But um, even when I'm trading something small, I want to get a good trade. It's not like if I have like a, a red dragon or like a unicorn that I'll take anything. Uh, I want a good offer. And, and the beauty about trading is that you don't have to accept any trade. Like a lot of times people get mad because like they'll offer you something and they'll say, that's fair. Um, or they'll say, I was over. It's like if you don't like the trade, you don't have to take it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's fair or not. So even at the lower levels of um, offers, I want something good. I, well, this is actually, uh, this is an interesting offer. Mega Snow Owl, Neon Crow, Mega T-Rex. Uh, the Metal Oxes are just ads because I hate Metal Oxes. Um, okay, interesting. Okay, so um, you have to like, um, hold on, let's see. Okay, Neon, all right, I'm gonna decline this also. You have to get good at like understanding the values because even at like uh, trading unicorns and stuff, you have to, like in order for you to get an overpay or a very good offer, you have to know what it's worth. Like how do you even know if somebody gave you a fair offer or if somebody gave you an overpay? You have no idea unless you know what the values are. So I, I would really recommend going online and, and doing some research. I have seen some people put together lists with what they think the values are. Some of those lists are pretty good. Uh, some of them are um, in the ballpark, but it'll give you some kind of rough idea. And um, the, the good thing about trading is, like I said before, you don't have to take any offer. So you can just, for me, what, I've, what I just do is like, whether it's a big pet or a small pet, I just wait for somebody to give me a really good offer. And sometimes it takes a long time and sometimes it goes quick. That's why I would recommend you only focus on trading pets that actually have demand. You know, like uh, right here, there's like a capybara or whatever. You know, I mean, yeah, sure, that has some value and sure there's somebody out there that wants it, but is there a lot of people that want it? Probably not. You know, you stick with, you stick with popular things like turtles, kangaroos, parrots, owls, um, on the lower level, you know, I think a lot of people um, underestimate unicorns because they're kind of like, oh, unicorns, that's been in game for a long time. It will always be in game. It's legendary, but a lot of people have it. I got to tell you, I love trading for unicorns. Unicorns have such high demand because it's like a lot of people that are just playing this game casually. They're like, I want a regular unicorn or I want a neon unicorn and they will overpay for it. So you can't like trades are interesting because it, it's like some people are kind of like, oh, you're a good trader or whatever. I can't control what people offer for my pets. All I can do is kind of put myself in the best position for people to offer for it. Uh, the problem with the bigger pets like a mega frost dragon is 
if I go into a server, the chances are there's only 48 people in this server. There's not a whole lot of people that even have enough pets to be able to trade with me. They just don't. I mean, there's not, I don't know if there's anybody else in the server that has a neon shadow or a neon giraffe or anything that can even add up to um, a neon frost dragon. So for me, if with something this big, I almost have to like keep jumping servers or try to find a super rich server. Otherwise I get people like this offering me regular red dragons. Um, it's fine when I'm trading a lot of like the smaller pets, which I do all the time. Um, and in fact, it's easier to get like um, good trades on smaller pets because uh, some people don't really know value and they're willing to all overpay. I mean, you could have a situation where somebody is making, let's say, a neon golden penguin and maybe they'll offer you three snow owls. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make any sense, but they really don't care. And if you think about it, it's just a few pets to them. Uh, if they really want something, maybe they'll overpay. Are you likely to get an overpay like that on bigger pets? No, because it's so much work. Um, people... People with these bigger pets, they have um, they have a better understanding of what the values are, and they're very conscious about overpaying by a lot. Like at the end of the day, like if if you do a trade and you're only over by like a dragon, like a red dragon or like a unicorn, you know that's not a whole lot. But if somebody were to say, "Oh, you overpaid and you were over by a neon crow," geez, that's a lot. That's a big like that's over by a lot. And that's a lot of work for anybody to get a neon crow or something like that. So um, I think for me, a lot of the best trades I've done were really on the lower level because you get somebody that is very interested in a very specific pet like an elephant or a llama. You know, I could get something like a llama. It's a ultra rare from a farm egg. And most people would be like, no, nah, I'm not really interested in that. But somebody that really wants a llama, they might, they might give me like two legendary ride pets for it. And I'm kind of like, oh, good. But that all adds up. And then when you get enough of those pets, you have to trade it up. You trade it up for a, a turtle. You trade it up for um, an albino monkey, a kanga, an arctic reindeer. You make neons of those. Those neons you trade up. And then before you know it, you've got like, let's say a frost dragon, and then you you trade that up, you get like a bat dragon, you get a giraffe, you get a shadow dragon, you get a mega turtle. Uh, it's really just building on the pets you have. Like for example, like me, you look at my inventory, it's kind of like, I've got a mega frost dragon right now and a mega turtle. The rest of my stuff is kind of like not that great. And the reason for that is, I, um, I'm constantly building up. So whenever like I have pets and I add more things, I'll probably, if I get better pets, I'll probably take this mega turtle and I'll do the ads, like I'll make ads and then I'll trade it for either, I'll trade it probably for a neon frost dragon. And then I'll do some more trading and then that, that neon frost dragon, um, trade that for something else. Um, you know, with like, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll break it up. Maybe I'll take a neon owl with good ads. And then you kind of just go back and forth. And over time, um, if you just keep building, you get to a mega frost dragon. It took me, if you want to know how long it took me to get a mega frost dragon, it took me three months. I've been playing Adopt Me for three months. I've only spent $2 on uh, Robux. That's the most I've ever spent, $2. And that was like um, very early on, I was playing Adopt Me and I was kind of like, you know what, I really want a lemonade stand and a hot dog stand. So I spent $2. And that's it. I have never spent money on this game again. Uh, anything I've gotten, I've gotten by way of trading up and upgrading. And th doing it the long way like that is actually really good because it really teaches you about the value. So in order for me to get to a mega frost dragon, I've pretty much had every pet at one point. So I know the values of uh, neon turtles. I know the values of um, parrots. And I know the values of neon frost furies and neon giraffes and uh, shadow dragons, you know? Um, so, so that's how you do it. Um, 
you know, I, I think what I'll do is like over a course of a few videos, I'll continue to talk about how to make good trades and how to build your inventory and how to get better pets. But that, those are really the basics. It's really just um, making good trades. Be patient. Don't take bad trades. You don't have to take a bad trade. If you have, you know, somebody might say like, oh, you, you know, you've got a turtle, but you never trade it. It's like, okay, well then don't trade your turtle. Wait until you get a really good offer and then trade it. And if you're lucky, there'll be enough there for you to trade back for your turtle with a little extra. And that's where you really start building your inventory is essentially trading for things um, and then getting it back, just trading it back and forth. I'll tell you, it's not easy. There's no easy way to do this. It just takes time. Um, so anyway, all right. Uh, this server is really not that good for my uh, Mega Frost Dragon. It's just, um, it looks like a rich server, but it's, you know, maybe there's a few people here that are super rich. But uh, as you can see, there's just not a lot of people that can even offer for my Mega Frost Dragon. But uh, I did only just kind of make this video to explain, you know, the basics of how to get a Frost Dragon. The answer is, it's not easy. You kind of have to grind, you have to trade, you have to build it up. It takes a lot of patience. And at its core, it requires good trading. And good trading means not taking bad trades. It means sitting in a server and waiting for people to give you a very good offer. Not a fair offer, a very good offer. And when you get that very good offer, you take it, you run, and then you take the pets that you got from that and you sit in another server. And you wait for them to offer you. Um, You'll get better trades if they offer you versus if you offer them. If you offer them, they'll think you really want their pet and they'll say you add. If you are the one that they that gets approached and they try to trade you, you're the one in a position to say, okay, you want my pet, you're gonna have to add or show me what you got, you know? So anyway, all right, until next time, um, you know, um, subscribe, like this video and I'll see you next time.